3D Cat Skeleton Cameo Pendant Acrylic Nail Art Tutorial. Hello everyone. So in today's video, I'm going to be making another cameo. I have made a few others in the past and I'll put links to those in the description box. This one is the same cameo uh, frame, but then it's got a light blue background with a dark blue cat silhouette and then the cat um, skeleton that's three dimensional coming out of it, which is sort of cool and creepy and elegant all rolled into one. It is something so, I don't know, I think it's awesome. So I hope you like it too. And also if you're interested, it is available to be purchased in my online store and there'll be a link to that as well in the description box. I hope you like this design and don't forget to click subscribe to my future videos as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to be sculpting the shape of my cat silhouette with dark blue. And so I'm going to take dark blue acrylic, surprise, surprise, and I'm just going to start. I'm going to work on her head first. And so I'm going to, I have a photo that I'm looking at that shows um, the cat silhouette with a little, like a illustration of a skeleton in front of it. And so that's what I'm working off of. And that is so nice to have because you can look at photos of a real cat skeleton I am a little squeamish, so I didn't exactly want to do that. Um, I would have been willing to, but I'd rather not have. So I was glad I found this one that's more like a drawing or an illustration. I think it was a computer rendering. Anyways, so that's what I was basing this off of. And it was really nice to have the silhouette behind it because you really get an idea of where everything goes and where it's supposed to go. So that is what I worked off of. And so for in your case, you can look at the photo of my pendant, but as I was making this, I didn't have that yet. So I obviously couldn't look at it in order to do that. But anyways, sculpting my slightly sparkly dark blue kitten. And the other thing that I wanna say is when you're doing this, you wanna make sure that your 3D stuff at this point for this step is got a thick enough edge on it so that when you file away later on, it's gonna reveal a nice, a nice sharp edge. That being said, if it's not, it's going to look a little bit foggy. And if you get it done to this stage, which is what I would probably, is what I did, you get it done so that you got the outlines all in place. You can go through with more of the dark blue acrylic and thicken up any areas that seem a little bit on the thin side and just make sure that at that point, they're then good to go. So now I'm going to be putting on a layer of this creamy, beautiful blue that I have, this light blue I use all the time. It's one of my favorite acrylics. Um, but I'm just going to put that on there. The opacity of it is beautiful, so it's really going to cover in a nice thin layer, which is nice for this because once we start filing it, it is going to end up really thin. So then, in case you haven't guessed, I'm going to be filing, if I haven't said that enough already. So I'm going to be filing it with an e-file. If you're familiar with my videos, you know that generally speaking, I shy away from using e-files just because I not it, I'm not totally comfortable with it and I prefer to use a hand file. Uh, in this case, though, it would be extremely difficult to use a hand file, mostly because you can't get in there with it. And so I am using an e-file for this. And also, with a hand file, you'd probably end up filing your frame, which I have bought. I did not make the frame, if you're possibly thinking that. I bought them. Um, but you would file it, and it's a plated, it's metal, but it's a plated metal, and so you'd file off the plating, and it wouldn't end up looking as silvery. It'd probably turn a little bit more of like a pewter color, a little darker, less shiny and pretty. So I'd really try not to file your frame, which with a hand file would most likely end up inevitable. So just keep that in mind. But I'm just gonna be filing it, making sure I reveal all of those cat parts. <laughs> cat parts. Oh yeah, yeah. Anyways, and now I'm going to be after that's all filed and looks as perfect as can be, I'm going to add a layer of clear acrylic. This is going to bring the thickness of it up to the edge of the frame, just to the edge, not over the edge, just right up so it's nice and flat. I'm going to really smooth that out with my brush, and then with some gel, I'm going to add a little layer on top of that, and then I'm going to flip it over upside down so it gets a nice domed shape before I cure it. And I am actually using Madame Glam's top coat because it is incredibly thick, and at the current moment, I do not own any clear builder gel. If you had clear builder gel, go ahead and use that. It would be a-okay. That Madame Glam top coat does dry without a tacky layer without a tacky layer or cure without a tacky layer and so I didn't have to go and cleanse it or anything and I didn't think it needed to be filed so I was just ready to continue on which is what I'm doing now and I sculpted out my skeleton so the first thing I did is I started with my kitten skull and I did the skull and the upper jaw and then I started doing the lower jaw and when you're doing this try very very carefully to leave a blue outline around everything the more of a blue outline you're going to leave the better it's going to look 
that being said, this is pretty small to do an entire skeleton like this. And sometimes the blue just gets covered up like a little bit by her jaw in the front of her face. There's not so much blue showing. It is a little bit, a very, very little bit. It's enough that you still know that it's there, but it's not so much that you can really see it. It's more like it's an implied blue line. But anyways, I continued on with her spine that runs down her back in a slight curve, added her shoulder blade. And for the spine, I like to make that nice long stripe of white acrylic that's on the wetter side. And then I like to take either the tip of my brush or you'll see me use a later. Later, I have a cuticle pusher that's got a really nice flat blade type edge. And I like to use that as well. But if you're going to be using a metal implement like that to work and mold acrylic, you're going to want to dip it into some clear acrylic first, just so that it doesn't have the chance of sticking. You don't really want your implements all covered in acrylic at takes work to get it off. Believe me, I know I've done that once or twice or 10 times. So just dip it in acrylic powder. If you're doing something with white, either use clear or white. If you're doing a colored, if you're doing it with color acrylic, like pink, for instance, I would just go with clear because if you use pink powder, I don't know, it seems like it gets powdery feeling. White, I don't have an issue with, but rule of thumb, I would just probably stick with clear. So then I sculpted out her front arm and then her back leg. And I did not do like four legs because I really didn't think I had room for that. I just did two legs. If you were doing this on a larger scale, you could do a front and a back leg and a front and a back arm. Or I guess that doesn't really make much sense. A forward and a behind arm and a forward and behind leg. That doesn't sound any better, but it makes me feel like I'm making more sense. And then I'm going to start doing her tail and it's the same exact thing as her spine. So I'm going to add that long stripe and then this is where I'm using my cuticle pusher and I'm just going to create the little dents in there. And when you do these, try to keep your little dents evenly spaced just so that they look like they aren't all random. Um, and do your white lines in segments. Like as you can see, I did the tail in two parts. If you do it all at once, chances are by the time that you get it all into that nice line, you're gonna end up with it starting to cure on you and then you won't have time to put those little dents in there and separate out all of those little bones. So now I'm going to take diluted white paint. So I just take a uh, dip my brush that's covered in white paint in my little cup of water and then I like to blend stuff on my thumb. It's easier for me. So I'm just gonna wash over most of the 3d stuff to make it a little bit brighter and like it shows up a little better when you do a wash like this it isn't going to cover each part you're just going to highlight each bone a little bit at most i'd say about halfway so just highlight the higher parts and that's going to make the 3d even more obvious so thank you so much for watching i hope you like this design and as i mentioned before it is available in my online store so check that out below and i will see you in my next video bye